Ammo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambhu tassa Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo sadanto suche do ye hula hudi san miao san putoshi. Wu shang shen shen wei miao fa bai qian wan jie nan zao yu. Wu jin jian wan de shou chi. Yan jie ru lai jian shi yi. The unsurpassed, deep, profound, subtle, wonderful Dharma in hundred thousand million eons is difficult to encounter. Now that I've come to receive and hold it, Within my sight and hearing, I bow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual meaning. Venerable Master, Dhamma friends, welcome to our Sutra Lecture tonight. This is the uh, August 24th, Saturday night. We're here in Berkeley, California at the Berkeley Buddhist Monastery, lecturing on the Flower Garland Sutra, the Avatamsaka. And uh, <coughs> we're on the fifth ground out of ten grounds. And I hope everybody has remembered to disable your communications device so it doesn't ring and make you embarrassed. I have done that. And we will be looking into this fifth ground tonight. There's a lot of uh, announcements of things to come as well at the end. And we have uh, down the center of our Buddha hall, we have a table full of offerings because this is the day that we are collecting Ulambana. Uh, this is the week we've been collecting Ulambana offerings. And it's that time of year again. The uh, 15th day of the 7th lunar month was Wednesday, the actual day of Ulambana. So today at Berkeley we had our celebration and we uh, explained the sutra. We recited it, explained it, went into it, talked about the principles and why we have this table laden with things like I can see oatmeal and rice and grape juice, and batteries, and seaweed chunks, kitchen aids, toilet paper towels, and we're missing the keys to the BMW. That's our standard joke, and we expect to see them there before tomorrow when we clean the stuff off, or else. Kidding about that part. We wouldn't know what to do with a BMW. That would be the, the end of the Dharma here in America. Oh, I see the monks are driving BMWs now. No, 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 that's an ex-monk. <laughs> that, that was a monk. But Please turn, if you will, to page, the front cover, front cover of your sutra text, because we're going to invoke the Buddhas and the Bodhisattvas of the Avatamsaka assembly before we begin here. Namo Ta Fang Wang Po Hua Yen Jin Hua Yen Hai Hui O Pu Sa Nam Ta Fang Wang Po Hua Yen Jin Hua Yen Hai Hui O Pu Sa Nam Ta Fang Wang Fo Hua Yen Ji Hua Yen Hai Wei Po Pu Sa Na Ta Fang Wang Fo Hua Yen Ji Hua Yen Hai Wei Po Pu Sa Na Ta Fang Wang Fo Hua Yen Ji Hua Yen Hai Hui Fo Pu Sa Na Ta Fang Wang Fo Hua Yen Ji 
by and highway o pusana o ta phong quang hoa yen ching hoa yen highway o pusana o ta phong quang pho hoa yen ching hoa yen highway o We're on page 34 and 35 in our sutra text. Master Jin Fan lectured last week with the assistance of our two brand new bhikkhus who you should all meet uh, as their new incarnations. Uh, the monk known as Chin Wei uh, still exists as a disciple of the Buddha, but he is now a bhikshu and his name is Jin. Chuan, everybody can say it except him. Jin Chuan. Chuan. You don't have to do anything special, it's just Chuan, Chuan, Jin Chuan. And it means uh, to transmit, to carry forward. It also means tradition, Chuan Tong. Uh, everybody can say Chuan. Chuan, Chuan. it's easy. Yeah. Jin Chuan. And he'll have to get used to that, so a new name. So. And in sitting in the back watching the door is the former uh, Guo Shun, sure, who is still left to Guo Shun when he's talking to his teacher who gave him the Guo name. But his new monk's name is Jin He. Jin He. And it's the He of uh, harmony. Lian He Guo, United Nations He. So, yeah. Every, every new monk has to figure out how they're going to say it in Chinese. I'm Hung Shi, I say Shi Zai De Shi. I'm, I'm constantly real, the reality real. We go, oh, oh, Naga Shira, ah, Shira, oh, uh, uh, Shira, Shira, Shira. And, and he's going to say, Lian Hu Guo. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 Lian Hu Guo. Jin Chuan is going to say what? Chuan Tong de Chuan. Because that, and the way you said it gives you kind of your, the flavor of it. So Chuan Tong means tradition. And he goes, oh, tradition, yeah, yeah, yeah. So very respectful, you know, respectable. Good, so Jin Chuan, yeah. So Jin Chuan, Jin Hu. And uh, they will be here steadily, um, while I will be here occasionally, from now on until uh, October. But uh, you'll find them here. Master Da Xing, da Xing Basha, is concurrently observing a vow of silence. And it's a difficult practice to keep, and so we're trying hard to, to assist him in his vow of silence. Um, it's, it's hard to do that and still be visible, still be around and doing things. So uh, he's, it, it, makes, it takes his practice up a notch. And Dashing Fasher is a uh, dedicated Chan monk, a meditator. And to keep a vow of silence, in a word, it is inconvenient for him and for us, which is precisely why it's good. Because it makes, you have to, to think before you casually chatter or just say something you shouldn't say like gossip or or something you know offensive which people do and uh, it's it makes interactions a little harder puts a filter on interactions and so it results in more mindfulness you have to think about what you're going to say before you say it so it's a uh, a really good practice and uh, it took me about a year to get used to being silent so that during that year, I was still I, biting my tongue every time I wanted to say something. So it's it's tough. So we'll be protecting.
is supporting his practice. We, last week with Master Jin Fan, left off on line four. Jie Ping Deng Xin. So we'll start that. It's in the English on the right hand side, it's precepts, a mindset of equality and purity towards the precepts. Let's read down to the bottom of that paragraph and see, see how far we get as we explain. All right, so palms together now and line four. Jie Ping Deng Qing Jing Xin. Xin Ping Deng Qing Jing Xin. Chu Jian Yi Hui Ping Deng. Let's see, sorry. Chu Jian Yi Hui Ping Deng. Let's do it in, in half. Chu Jian Yi Hui Ping Deng Qing Jing Xin. Dao Fei Dao Zhi. Ping Deng Qing Jing Xin. Xiu Xing Zhi Jian. Ping Deng Qing Jing Xin. Yu Yi Che Pu Ti Fen Fa. Shang Shang Guan Cha. Ping Deng Qing Jing Xin. Jiao Hua Yi Che Zhong Sheng. Ping Deng Qing Jing Xin. Pu Sa Mo He Sa. Yi Ci Shi Zhong. Ping Deng Qing Jing Xin. De Ru Pu Sa. Di Wu Di. Right. Uh. Excuse me one second. I was just hit with a brainstorm that I don't dare forget or I'll be in trouble. Make a mental note here. Right. What is going on here? The cultivator of the our sutra, our generic monk, is in ground five, the fifth ground. The fifth ground is about meditation. Because the grounds parallel the paramitas. And the fifth paramita is the... You all know? What is the sixth? Prajna. What is number the fifth? Dhyana, usually, because it's Chan No. It's, you're right, it's about meditation, concentration, but the Chinese kept the Sanskrit. They called it Chan No Bolo Mi, like Boro Bolo Mi is Prajna, it's not wisdom. We translate it into pra- wisdom, but the Chinese called it Prajna. The one preceding it is the Dhyana Paramita. Dhyana means meditation, concentration, purity, etc. And they go as a pair. Number five and number six work together. Number one and number two work together. Number three and number four work together. So five and six are a pair. So concentration and wisdom. This is the concentration one. So everything about this, number five, is going to have to do with aspects of meditation. And if you look at it through that lens, this list of ten things makes sense, make more sense. What is it? Every one of the grounds, the bodhisattva, uses ten shin, ten mindsets, ten ways of looking, ways of being, in order to approach this new body of knowledge. Each one of the grounds is like, kind of like a, a year of school, a year of college, kind of. Um, it's a specific set of techniques, of information, of attitudes that the bodhisattva in training, needs to absorb, needs to practice, and then needs to master before he or she can go on. Why do they want to do that? They want to do that because they have people in their lives 
whom they have agreed to help. They have promised, they've vowed, they've sworn that they're going to intervene in their lives skillfully so they don't get them upset and make things better for them. That's the bargain. And that's so hard. I mean, think about your mom, right? Do you influence her towards the good? Does, do you see your mom's faults? Of course you do. And if you were able to say a good word or two or silently put some leverage on her so that she could change her faults and make her life happier, you'd do it, right? Yeah, of course you would. How do you do it? Very, very difficult. Why? She didn't have to listen to you. You came from her. You're hers. You're part of her body. She knows everything about you from top to bottom, from in to out. How are you going to influence your mom? Oh boy. But you want to. There's a motive to do that because you care about her and you see her suffering. So wouldn't it be nice if you could say the magic word and mom would go, oh, good idea, I'll do that right away. You know, wow, that's, that's, I, I agree. Hard, isn't it? Because you're, think of the difference in age, think of the difference in attitudes, etc. And the difference in relationship. She's the power figure, you're the offspring. So we still want to do it. The Bodhisattva says, yep, those are the living beings I'm talking about. I'm going to cross them over. Huh. <laughs> okay, who's it talking about? Well, it is talking about my bad habits, my faults, my false thoughts. But it's, who do you take across if you're a bodhisattva? Well, the hardest ones are the ones closest to you, for sure. And yet those are the ones you know best. Um, there's a kind of a cliche in the Sangha, in the monastic world, that parents are the last ones to take across. They're the hardest ones. Because, just like I say, you're, you are transparent to them, and they think, huh, you're the holy man, huh? Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, well, this is the Dharma ending age, isn't it? <laughs> Standards are falling all over. So, and if it's your brother or sister, I mean, jeez, they know all that. They know your buttons, and they can push them. And get right past your brand new appearance as a holy person. So, it's hard to teach, to help, to benefit, to, to make a difference in the lives of people we care about. And yet, those are the ones that we want to help, because we know them. So, Bodhisattva says, got to learn this information. Got to learn these techniques. Got to learn these perspectives. Got to master the Dharma. And that's his challenge. That's her challenge. So, that's what he's about. And here in the fifth ground, these shin, these mindsets, are based on meditation. That's what's unique about them. Not giving, not precepts, not patience, not vigor, but meditation. So, what, how did they begin? They all are characterized by the word qingjing. They're, first of all, they're all xin, they're mindsets. And we've been through why we picked that word for xin. And they are qing jing. Xin. Notice every one. And furthermore, they are ping dang. Qing jing xin. What is that? Okay, they're purity. Qing jing is purity. And ping dang is, uh, we translated here, equality. We used to translate it level and equal. Level and equal is ping dung. The two Chinese words, two English words. Kind of works, but there's got to be a better way to describe it. What is level and equal purity? That's what we're talking about, isn't it? All of these ten are qualified by level equal purity. So, do we have a, have a sense of what that might mean? Mm, let's look into it. Setting that pattern aside, the ping dung, qing jing, xin part, there are ten of those, but then the part that changes throughout, the first one is Dharma of the Buddhas of the past. When you hear that, you pretty much know what the next two are going to be, 
If past, then it's present and future. So, right. Dharma of the Buddhas of the future. Dharma of the Buddhas of the present. All right, we got three out of ten. Two patterns, past, present, and future, three periods of time. They are ping dang, qing jing. They're level, equal, and pure. Okay, so that was what Master Jin Fan talked about last time. Um, what in the world are we talking about? Does this make sense or not? Or is it kind of like something you can go to sleep about? Nah, it's more fun if you stay awake. What does it mean? Equality is the way it's translated here, not ping dung, level equal. Equality and purity. Here's my experience of what this is about. When you meditate and you get good at it, things become ping dung, qing jing. They start to level out. They start to get pure. Not to say they were dirty before. It's not purity like clean. It's purity meaning essential. Nothing extraneous, nothing extra. Here's what happens. You sit still and something changes with your six senses. Your eyes are looking down. There's not much to see in front of you. You're not moving around. Often it's dark. There's not a lot of light in the Buddha hall. Colors get muted, right? Your ears are open, but not listening for sounds, hoping to hear somebody say your name or straining to hear what that music is out from the kitchen. You know, your nose and your tongue are the quietest ones of all because there's no particular stimulation. What is your, what's the flavor in your mouth when you're meditating? It's kind of like bland, right? No flavor. What's the nose doing? Well, there's incense. If you're meditating at Buddha Root Farm, there's pine needles. There's a, a green smell. If you're meditating down at Highway 9, it's perfume. Because redwoods have a really special perfume, and it's, it's so thick in the air, you could feel like you reach out and grab a handful of that smell. Okay, your body is maybe, except after the mind, the sense that is working the most when you meditate. Why? Pressure on your knees, straining on your back, a sense of dullness creeping up in your head as the fire rises, pain, you know, there's, there's pressure on your bottom on the cushion. It might be cool in there or downright cold, so your skin. So your fifth sense, the skin, the body, touch, is going bonkers. The needle is going do 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 as you register all those sense impressions tangible and then there's the mind and anybody who's meditated knows that when you start your mind is truly the monkey in the cage it's the wild horse running across the fields right it's the fish in the stream trying to the salmon trying to stay upright going upstream to spawn the mind is a squirrel in the cage running like crazy. Your body's sitting still, but your mind is going a mile a minute. Crazy. Funny, huh? So, your six senses are experiencing that meditation in a full and complete, thorough, amazing way. People think, huh, meditation. Just sitting there like a bump on a log. Why don't you go out and get a job? Do something valuable. I would rather be dead than sit there just doing nothing, you know. I've heard all these things about meditation. Well, as soon as somebody who says those things sits down, what they discover is it's work to meditate if you're really doing it. Although your body is not covering ground, there's not a lot of, of calories being burned as you sit there. Nonetheless, everything is engaged in a genuine way. Okay, that's the first experience. Come back every day, maybe twice a day, for a week, for a month, for a year, for five years. Things change a lot. Things change. You know how they change? They become ping dong, qing jing. They become equal, impartial. You could say ping dong means impartial, no favorites, no hates, nothing that's your non-favorite. And 
they become essential. They simplify. We could probably translate this Ching Jing as simplified or refined, and it might be closer. Pure always sounds kind of like uh, 99 and 40, 100, 44, 100% you know, ivory snow, clean like soap. It's not pure like soap. It's pure meaning distilled, refined to the nub, down to the core, nothing extra, Re- like smelted like gold, right? That's what this Ching Jing means. That's what happens when you sit. When you sit for a long time, Okay, before you sit, everybody, eyes on my hand. Before you sit, things are like this. Ooh, I really like that. Ooh, I hate that. Boy, I hope this happens. Gee, I really hope this doesn't happen. You know, why didn't she call me? Boy, am I glad she didn't call me. You know, she might have caught me. What if I got, well, I better call her because I might, what if I, she's, you know. And it's like that. And we're just, we go from one peak to a trough to a peak to a valley to a peak to a valley. Okay, meditating five years, here's the difference. It's like this now. I think meditate to the fifth ground, the Samadhi, is like this. Ping dong. Which is what? Your senses work better than before. They're not blocked off. It's just that things don't move you anymore. Not up, not down. Nothing is a high, nothing is a low. And you say, how boring. Who wants that? I like passion in my life, right? I mean, I don't want to do that. Just like, but it's not that you change reality. Reality is still working just like always. But your response to it doesn't attach and it doesn't push away. Here, you're attaching to the ones you like and pushing away. You're pursuing what you love and running from what you hate, like that. That's most of us before we sit. When you sit still, it's like, oh yeah, it's just that. It's only my ears responding to stimulations. Why love it and hate it? That's a lot of extra work. It's just that. It's just somebody with a confused, afflicted, heart, they haven't figured stuff out, why do I get upset when they scold me? That's their affliction. I don't have to catch fire, right? They call me a name, that's fine. That tells me more about them than it does about me. That name sticks nowhere. Where on me are the things they're calling? I'm just seeing their affliction. I don't have to get fire, catch fire in response, right? That's going from this to going... And pretty soon you get to where you recognize every single state. Root to branch. Because why? Your wisdom is stronger than before. Here's another way to talk about it. The fun bi xin, the discriminating mind, is a beautiful set of Chinese characters. Fun bi has two knives in it. Fun's got a dao, and bi has got a dao. Two knives. Fun bi xin, the discriminating mind, is going chop, 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 chop. Like that, just the way you're chopping vegetables for, for your stir fry. Chop, 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 chop. Like that. Every experience is a fragment, and you kind of go, oh, there's so much going on, it's just chaotic, and, and I, I'm really frazzled because I can't make sense of it all. Right? That's the mind, that's the monkey mind. In there, picking bananas. Banana, 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 banana. They all look good. In the end, you got two. One here and one here. You know, you reach for the other one, oh, drop it, catch it. All this reaching, you still wind up with two bananas. You know, That's the monkey mind. We stuff the garbage can full. I'm mixing metaphors, but you get the idea. What, after five years of meditation, what's different? You now have a mirror instead of a monkey. And the mirror sees all of that, all the bananas on the tree and goes, bananas, fruit. I'm not hungry. Bananas are fine. No thanks. Sees them and doesn't move. Right? That's the ping dong, ching jing xin. Instead of the fun 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 fun, now it's integrated into a mirror. Dai yuan jing zhi. Great, perfectly reflecting mirror. 
That's the difference. And you only get there through hard work. Sitting still, bringing the pieces back together. So meditation unifies your experience. And the six senses, they're keener than ever. They don't get dull. They don't get rusty. They are super sensitive. Because why? You're not, you're letting them function in a whole new way. They're not going out looking. They're not pulling in and holding tight against. That pursuing and retreating is now quiet for you. So your wisdom is like a mirror through the function of your stillness. And it's genuinely different now. It reflects instead of editing. All right? You have so much experience and your senses are so calm from having hui guang, hui guang, hui guang, fan wen wen zixing. You're returning the light. That's our clunky idiom, hui guang. Your eyes are letting your energy return to its source in the mind. Your ears, fan wen wen zixing. You're turning the hearing back to hear yourself nature. Instead of going out loving, hating, loving, hating, loving, hating, you're going, okay, I can hear my own nature. Guan shi yin, contemplating the sounds, and that energy is now yours. The mirror starts to work. You reflect experience instead of pursuing some, attaching to it, running from others, defending against it. Okay, have I beaten that? Analogy to death now, you get it all? That's why it's ping dong ching jing. It's unified, it's essential, but it functions in a beautiful, reflective way. Shifu would say, Shi lai zi jing. Ah, wrong. Shi lai zi ying. Shi bi zi jing. When something comes, it reflects perfectly. Just like a perfect mirror, no distortion. You see it exactly as it is, not the way you kind of like it or maybe hope it will be. You're not projecting and anticipating. When it comes, it's reflected. When it's gone, the mirror is still. I love that, that idiom, right? Something shows up and the mirror goes, ding, that's it. I got it. That's exactly what it is, but no delusion. No distortion. But when the thing is gone, your mirror just goes back to rest. Perfect. So with that in mind, okay, that's our preamble. That's what's ping dong, ping dong ching jing about this. It's the result of his or her meditation. Okay? A mindset of unity, unity and essence and refined, a refined, unified attitude towards the precepts. Precepts is the first one. So we had the Buddha, the Dharma of the Buddhas of the past, present, and future. In other words, whatever they teach in the past, whatever they're teaching now, whatever they'll teach, I'm, it's all good. It's all effective. Now, precepts. What about the precepts? The precepts, how could you be ping dong ching jing for the precepts? You are ping dong ching jing to the precepts because they have a single function. What do precepts do? They hold in the virtue that we already have. That's what precepts are about. They are ways to hang on to the essence, energy, and breath. Jing qi shen that we have. And that's their, their, their purpose. The Buddha did not give his precepts to make sure we have no fun, to guarantee that life is a bummer. That's not what the precepts are for. And that was my attitude as a, growing up as a kid. And I was wrong, right? Precepts are there to hold in your, Sherpa would say, your precious jewels. Your the, the treasures in your home. The precepts are there to keep us from losing them. How do we lose them? Killing, stealing, lusting, lying, drugging ourselves. Seems like, quote, fun in the world, 
But the result is you wind up with less than what you had. And if you can keep the precepts, it's a really kind thing. What else about the precepts? They are kindness. Because if I kill somebody, I've hurt them and I've hurt myself. I lose my best stuff, my virtue. If I kill somebody, I, if I steal from somebody, I hurt them and I hurt myself. Right? So it's a mutual loss. They are not kind. If I lust, uh, if I rape, or worse, commit incest, which is an ugly, ugly reality in some parts of this country. Um, we won't, won't go into that tonight, but um, one of my professors at GTU comes from Indiana, and uh, she was talking at one point about when she was a counselor at the University of Indiana. She was a schoolgirl fresh off the farm, and many, many of the young women who came in for counseling had had experience with patriarchal, biblical, prophetic fathers who claimed as their right the, the, the wrong approach to their own daughters. And I'll, I'll leave that there. But she said it was a real shocker to find that we're in the Bible Belt. Uh, that is one of the realities. So, ugly. So, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't help you. It hurts you. It hurts others when we behave when we conduct ourselves with sexual misconduct. When we lie to other people, we hurt ourselves, we mess up the waters of our mind, and we deceive others. Um, it's hard to trust someone who has lied to you. And when we drug ourselves, we don't so much hurt others, but we certainly hurt ourselves. So, the kindness sees those behaviors and says, no, I won't do that, that hurts people, me and others, so I won't do it. Ping dong, ching jing, impartial, unified, refined. Okay, so far so good. Next, this is a funny one, it starts with xin and it ends with xin. You see this one? Xin, ping dong, ching jing, xin. Uh, attitude of impartiality, non-bias, and essential quality towards every thought in the mind. Boy, is this one tough. Why? We are taught that our thoughts really matter a lot. There's a great bumper sticker. How does it go? Don't believe everything you think. You see that one? Don't believe everything you think. Which, like, you go, uh-huh, and then you think about it, and you go, but that's not American. I'm, my thoughts are the most important part. That's what made our country great. Freedom of thought, freedom of belief. So the Buddha would say, it's not that you don't have to doubt them, you just don't have to take any one of them as more valuable than any other. Master Hua would say, thoughts in the mind are like waves on the beach. Waves hitting the beach. What are they? Endless. A lot like the last one. This next one is going to be a lot like... Do you ever... Contemplate the waves. They're, they're really interesting. I, I did it a lot for years, bowing up the coast. And you want to like one, but it's gone. <laughs> There's a really nice wave. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> There's, there comes an, no, it's not a special one. Here's a really, really special one. You want to take it? No, it's gone. You know? It's like, you can't grab them. Our thoughts are just like that. Sometimes they're a little more depressed than others. Sometimes a little more elated than others. Sometimes it's like more connected, other times it's more scattered, but ultimately they're over. And to grab one is, is frustrating. Now, if you're a writer, scratch everything I just said. Writers live by capturing those special thoughts, right? And why do we read this author over that author? It's because of the way they approach their thoughts. It's the way they approach their experience. We like the way they say it. They say it in a way that connects with me, with you. But that's using the conscious mind. The thoughts that the Buddha, that our Bodhisattva here says are ping dong, ching jing, are 
the thoughts that simply roll on by. Why? He's a meditator. He's a meditator. And when you're meditating, you want to take those thoughts just the way you take the sounds, the sights, the smells, the tastes, and the sensations in your body. No different. The sixth sense, the mind, becomes just another sense. No different. Okay? Easy to say, hard to do. Um, open your songbook, everybody, and turn to page 48. I'm seeing so many sleepy faces. We've got to wake people up. It's been a long day, I think. We've had a full day of activity here, and maybe dinner was too good or something, but everybody's kind of sleepy. Uh, I would like you to turn, please, to page 28, and you got to sing. And then we'll come back to our sutra. You all know that Urstor Bodhisattva's celebration is approaching, right? So... It would be great if somebody up there said, Hey, at CTDB, can we do Dharma Master Schur's Earth Store song? And they're going to go, No, nah. you kidding me? Here? We don't do that here. We could. What's that? Hey, hey. I'm sure all the uh, sutra lectures of sutra lecturers of years past wish they had a waker upper like a guitar. capo on there. Not quite in tune, is it? Not very musical there, Dharma Master. Okay, crank that capo a little harder. There we go. E-R, son. Yep. You all know how it goes. Yes, Jerry? Put the microphone. Oh, I forgot about that. Thank you. If you don't know it, it's easy. It goes like this. I return, I rely On the Bodhisattva, King of Great Vows. That's Urstor. I return, I rely On the Bodhisattva, King of Great Vows. Here we go. To end her mother's misery was her quest. To end her mother's misery was her quest. Her vow she professed, a filial child so blessed. To end her mother's misery was her quest. I return, 
Northern I rely, can't hear you. On the Bodhisattva, King of Great Bow. If I can't hear you, Erstor can't either. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva, King of Great Bow. He makes his home deep in the hills. He makes his home deep in the hills. Well, it's deep in the hell that this Bodhisattva dwells. He makes his home deep in the hells. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Vows. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Vows. He shakes his staff and makes the suffering in. He shakes his staff and makes the suffering in. And then living beings karma starts the whole thing up again after he shakes his staff and the suffering ends. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Vows. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Vows. Until the hells are empty, he won't rest. Until the hells are empty, he won't rest. Saving those who've transgressed is the thing that he does best. Till the hells are empty, he won't rest. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Vows. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Vows. The fires of the hells won't make him move. The fires of the hells won't make him move. So firm are his vows, he'll still there to improve. The fires of the hells won't make him move. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Vows. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Vows. It's best to practice patience when you're stressed. It's best to practice patience when you're stressed. King Yama's unimpressed with your screams of protest. It's best to practice patience when you're stressed. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Vows. I return, I rely on the Bodhisattva King of Great Power. Okay. Wake you up a little bit. Get ready for more Dharma, more Sutra, more coming. So we are now on the mind. 
we are impartial towards thoughts because they flow one after the other. What about, look at this one. This is really complicated and interesting. The next two are really good. Okay. This is where you see the Buddha Dharma as psychotherapy. The Buddha was so tuned in to the human mind that he, if you, if you see it this way, this is so, it's so helpful. What is it? The verb is the first word, chu, getting rid of, casting out, expelling. So move it along, get it out of here. What is it? Three things. Jin, viewpoints. Yi, doubts. Hui, regrets. Ping dong, qing jing xin. Impartial, unbiased, and refined. So he, in order to enter the fifth ground of meditation, he masters a perspective which is a refined, unified mindset towards things that happen in your mind, points of view, doubts, and regrets. He gets rid of them. Now, why is that psychologically astute? What that means is the Bodhisattva is meditating there and this stuff comes to mind. It's always popping up. Gee, I wish I hadn't done that. Boy, I'm, I was such a loser. I, you know, I really, I, I probably shouldn't even be here. You know, I, I don't, the Buddha just might send a thunderbolt and zap me right here where I'm sitting. I'm such a terrible person. You know, that's the hoi, that's the regrets. The e, the doubts. You ever see anybody get enlightened? How come there aren't any Buddhas around? This is all kind of bogus. You know, it might all be fantasy. What is, what's that? That's a demon, uh, demonic. The nibbling of ducks on your mind, chewing away on your Bodhi resolve. It is called fanno. That's an affliction. You've got to wake up to that one. Doubts are lint under the bed. You have dust bunnies under your bed? Of course you do. Are they useful for anything? What, what's it worth if you go collect a pound of dust bunnies from under your bed? You know what a dust bunny is under your bed? Under the bed, that, that little kind of dusty thing that's there? Collect a whole bunch of it and then go sell it. People are going to go, you know, worthless, right? Doubts. Doubts in the mind are dust bunnies among your Bodhi resolve. Useless. Can't sell them for a penny. Doubts are the mind used unskillfully. Don't let them dust clog the purity of your resolve. For sure. Sweep them away. Doubts do never, ever, ever help you down the road. They're just sand in the gas tank. You know what else they are? They're an unwashed car windshield. I personally, I can't stand driving with like dust on my windshield. I really like a clean windshield because your life is how clearly you see what's coming, right? Some people just drive on with even with tree sap on their windshield. They never like press the squirter and just, I can't stand that. My mind is not ching, ping dong, ching jing regarding dust on my windshield. I want to get it out of there. And doubts in the mind are tree sap on your window. You haven't swept it away. You haven't gotten the squeegee and do it. Don't let doubts mess up your vision because they don't help you, right? And the first one, what else does he chu? He gets rid of, what was it? It was jian, points of view, which is what opinions. Opinions are the way you're seeing it today. Opinions are what? They're clouds in the sky. Today it's overcast because we're in the fog here, just opposite the bay right opposite the Golden Gate. 
fog. But if you drive your car up to, to uh, Richmond and look back, if you even go to El Cerrito and turn around, once you're past the little hill, the El Cerrito, right there by Ranch 99, you know, our little hill, which you, Albany Hill, turn around and look, that's a blanket of fog covering the Golden Gate area in Berkeley. It's really precise most days. And if you're coming down from the north, crossing the Richmond Bridge, you look over to Berkeley in Oakland, and there's this blanket of fog. That's Tian. That's a point of view, an opinion. Wait until noon, the sun burns it off. Low-lying fog, they call it. Right? Scattered clouds. And it's gone by noon, and then it's back by about midnight or two or three. So it's funny. It's regular if you wait and watch. We have overcast mornings and sunny afternoons, day after day after day. Which is the real weather? The answer is yes. Comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes. Points of view in the mind, opinions in the mind, just the same. Come and go. To take it as real, as fundamental, as important, as necessary? No. Nah. It's just the weather. It's one way or the other. The Bodhisattva goes, gets rid of them, sweeps them out. Opinions, doubts, and regrets. That's why this is a psychologically clever sutra, right? The Buddha's in there saying, don't hang on to that stuff. Why? You're meditating. You need to know the fifth grounds, Dharma. If you're meditating, don't take those phenomena of the mind as important or essential, or you. Your points of view, your opinions, are not you. They are clouds in the sky. The sun is still up there. What's the sun? Is your wisdom. The opinions, points of view, doubts, and regrets just block the sun. So recognize them. That's what the meditator does. Not that they're bad or wrong. They're just weather. Coming and going. It's always one way or the other. The mistake we make is when we say, oh, I'm just full of doubts, or I'm just, I'm just such a loser, right? Or I'll tell you what I think. I think, you know, you should all listen to me. My opinion matters a lot. No, it's going to change. What's behind the opinion is the substance of the mind, wisdom. That's what the, the meditator is now focusing on, is what's underneath all that. Why? He wants ping dong ching jing. He wants something impartial. He wants something refined. And it's there underneath all the other stuff. Okay, got it? Next, it's the Dao Fei Dao Zhi, Ping Deng Qing Jing Xin. Well, this is so interesting. Okay, word by word, let's look. Dao, you know that word? Here's a Buddhist sutra talking about the Dao. And next is Fei. Fei means non hyphen, not hyphen, Tao. The Tao and not the Tao, zhi, wisdom, ping dong, qing jing xin. He needs this to enter the fifth ground, to master the fifth ground. So it's the wisdom of seeing what is the Tao and what is not the Tao. How about that? It's his Tao detector wisdom, his Tao meter. So what is the Tao? Why is that something he wants? You could say that this is um, his, so it's wisdom. We know it's wisdom. It's innate. He's already got it. And the Tao tells him what is principle from non-principle. Okay? Give you a rude, crude example. When a political perspective, some elected official says, all government is bad. We should get rid of government. The less government we have, the better. What I earn is mine. I don't want to share it with anyone else. All mine. 
Okay? And that's a current political perspective from a certain number of people. The problem with that is what? Government doesn't necessarily mean big buildings or rich politicians. Government means when you go drive your car to the airport and you need to get on the entrance, that entrance will still be there without holes, without grass in the cracks, without a gap in the bridge. When you need to stop at the red light, that red light will still have electricity running through it and it'll be red and it'll be sequenced so it's green after it's red. That's government. When your mom needs to go to the emergency room because she fell, cracked her vertebrae, when she gets to the hospital, there will be somebody there who can find her name on a computer and get her checked in. Why? Because those records are held by the government. That's, and there will be care for her. That's government. It's services we share in common. Right? That's government. And so, the principle that we not only are individuals, we are also related to each other, and there are things that we hold in common, that's Tao. All right? So somebody comes along and says, no, 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 no. I think all government is bad. That's called Fei Dao, non Dao. All right? Because why? We breathe the same air. Is your air your air, not mine? Baloney. Get real. How about the water you drink? When you turn the tap on, is it going to be water that won't make you sick? How is that possible? Because the government put it that way makes it that way, maintains the things that we treasure in common. Water to drink, food that grows out of the ground, roads that we travel on, schools, libraries, hospitals, services. That's what it means. Okay, that's a principle. We are not isolated units. That's individualism taken to the point of disease. And sickness. Okay, I'm not expressing a political perspective. I'm talking about the Tao. Right? Is this tree the only tree that takes nutrition out of the soil? No. Every tree is rooted alike in soil. You can't pull, point to one tree and say, this is the only tree that counts. This tree is in opposition to every other tree, competing with them for the nutrients. Absolutely not true. So, that's Tao and Fei Tao. And the thing about this, this ping dung, qing jing xin, this bodhisattva knows not only what is the Tao, he can recognize what is not the Tao. In other words, his BS detector is very keen. Right? I had a professor who uh, said the purpose of a college education is to train your BS detector. That was what he said it's good for. So you can hear lies and recognize them, and not repeat them, not carry them on. So, that's one perspective, huh? So, the Tao and not the Tao. Of course it includes wisdom of shunyata, emptiness. Right? That's also the Tao. Emptying out emptiness. That's also the Tao. The uh, Mahaprajna Paramita, the wisdom that goes beyond, is also the Tao. But it comes down to seeing the connections. When you practice this wisdom, it comes down to recognizing how much we share. And cherishing it. And waking up. What, you know, if you want to take that, my principle that I just explained to its ultimate point, what do enlightened people tell us? Enlightened people tell us we're all related. That's how much. You know, it's family. Not only are we not separate units competing with each other, we're totally related. Okay, story. First United Religions Initiatives Global Summit, Stanford University, 1997. First time all these different religions have come together to spend a week together to see whether we have anything to share, anything in harmony. 
there was one other Buddhist monk there. And he was from Cambodia. And his name was Bhante. Have I forgotten Bhante's name? He passed away not long ago. Bhante. Nope, not Bhante Damawara, another one. Another Cambodian monk. This is the Cambodian monk who used to walk. He took troops of people through the live fire, the live troops, the bullets flying back and forth. He walked with them through the fire and looked at the Cambodians fighting with the Cambodians and said, aren't you ashamed of yourselves? Don't you know the Buddha can see you? He said to them, and they all go, put their guns down like that. And then Bhante keeps on walking, and they all pick pop, 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 after he's passed. But while he walked through the live fire fields, they stopped their fighting. What was his name? Uh, Maha Gosan. Who said so? Google. Google? Good for you. Thanks. <laughs> Mahagosananda, Bhante Mahagosananda, correct, that's him. He was really short, and he carried everything in his robe. He was one of those special monks who like had a whole closet of stuff in his robe. He would come out with a flashlight. He would come out with a magnifying glass. He would go pull out a hammer, you know. <laughs> he was ready for every situation, all in his robe. So, there he was. And uh, we were all in Stanford, and everybody, because he beamed, he had this cherubic face, and he was just smile, like that shining light. And he had a, a pink, his, his robes, the pink kind of tie, orange robes, going to pink, kind of fluorescent orange. And he had a, a wool cap that was thick and hot, and he had it pulled right down, and he was always in his wool hat. And we were all sweating, you know, in the hot California sun. He had his hat pulled down and his hammers and, and uh, computer mice and, you know, things. And, and uh, so he never said a word. A week, and he would be right there, sitting at the table with everybody and smiling, you know, and never said word one. And at the end, Bishop Swing says, well, we got to, you know... Here's a circle, and why don't we all say something good to send each other off into the world, carrying this new vision of what's possible. And they're always going, can you get the, the elder to talk? You know. So went around the circle, came to him, and they said, I'm sure. I go, Bante, could you please say something for all of us, please, some wisdom? Speak the Dharma for us, you know. He smiles, he says, We are all in the same boat together. We are all in the same boat together. Eight words. And everyone's going, Something about the way he said it hit the spot. And it was as if nobody had ever had that thought before, you know. Nobody had ever said those words. It was like, bong. And people were genuinely silent afterwards. They were kind of going, as it resonated, you know. The fact that we got eight words out of him all week made those eight words really go deep. It's funny how, like, people remembered that years later. Just the fact that he didn't, but we are all in the same boat together. Therefore, take care of each other. Same, together, we all. Right? So, that's the Tao. And anything that says not is Fei Tao. Sorry. This is wisdom, not looking at the branches and branch tips and the leaves and going, this leaf is really different than that leaf. It's like, no, these leaves all come out of the same tree that's rooted in the ground with all the other trees. Same. 
Don't waste your time trying to find differences and then hating the differences and then legislating against the differences and keeping your mother out of the hospital and your, you know, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that. Because that is fade Tao. And you know what they say? Anything that opposes the Tao will surely perish. If we live as if we are separate units, we will surely perish. Stupid. Wake up. You know. Oh boy. So there's a lot at stake in the Tao and the Fei Tao. And I have very, I'm running out of patience with people who want us to go back to sleep. You know. Sir. And Dharma? Okay. Uh huh. That's a powerful and subtle question. Okay, you want to say it again since you got a microphone? We'll give you the mic. Push it up there. Yep, it's on. I can see. Hello? Oh, hey, yes. Yeah, um, I still have a very hard time differentiating between Dhamma and Tao. Okay. Excellent. What's the difference between Dharma and Tao? Okay, um, Dharma has two spellings. One is capital D, one small d. Your question is talking about capital D. Yeah. Capital D is, in this case, teachings of the Buddha. All right? Including the Tao, but not limited to. The Tao, I say, is the way things are before words and thoughts. That's my rough and tumble definition of the Tao. So the way things are before you think about it and before you can name it. That's the Tao. Now, in that definition, that assumes that there is a way things are before you can name them and think about them. Yeah, there is. And it doesn't come, it doesn't go. It was here before I took this body. It'll be here after I recycle. My body is part of the Tao. But the Buddha didn't necessarily talk about that. But the Buddha did talk about the Tao, Marga, the path, and his Dharma includes it but is not limited to the Tao. So that's the difference. Make sense? You want to quote me? Okay. Uh, it comes, uh, what comes to my mind is a sutta. The thera- is a Theravada in the Nikaya Sutta, and that is the uh, bunch of leaves Sutta where the Buddha said, you know, where are more leaves in my hands? He grabs a bunch, and, or in the in this forest. And uh, anyway, so what the so the Dhamma is the leaves that the Buddha has in his hands, the, the, the selection, not of all his experiences, because in that Sutta he says, you know, I have experienced a lot more, but the ones that I'm teaching are the ones that I have in my hand. Mm. These leaves here. Mm. These are the ones that go lead to, uh, the end, to the end of suffering. Okay. So... Where does the Tao fit in? The, the, then the Tao is the forest. Mm-hmm. You could say. And, and the air around the forest. And, and everything. Yeah. And, okay, so, and the teachings of the Buddha are the Dhamma, which are the hands, the leaves in his hand. Mm-hmm. Good, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you answered it well. The, um, in Christianity, they would probably say the kingdom of God. Okay, in Hinduism for sure, they would say Brahma, Brahma. That's pretty much the equivalent. Is there anything that precedes the Tao? Um, You know, there's, you know, you have to name it. If you have to ask about it, you can't, you'll never hear it, you'll never see it, you know. So, we're right up there at the, at the biggest of the mysteries. The Tao is the biggest of the mysteries. And that's where Taoism does a really good job of naming it. You know, all of the Tao Te Ching, the Lao Tzu, 
is about the Tao, talking about it's, it, you can't get rid of it for an instant, you can't leave it for an instant, and yet you want to grab it? Can't have it. Know where it's not, know where it is. Right? Like that. So they use those beautiful religious phrases talking about the Tao. And yet, we just said that the, like the leaves in his hand, although I have to say that, you know how the Buddha used those. He said, those who get a human body are like the dirt in my hand. Those who lose their human body are like the dirt on the earth. So he was using that analogy for a different teaching, but it works. Yeah, it works. So, he, the Dharma that he taught sometimes included the Tao, but there was much more. The Tao preceded all of the Dharma. So it's kind of bellows, you know. <sighs> when you want to see the Tao, see it at work. It's still and it's moving. It's still and it's moving. It's like a heart. It's not quiet. It's dynamic. It's everything like that. Okay. We are, we got to, let's see, we did precepts, we did mind, we did views, doubts, and regrets, we did knowledge of what is and what is not the way. So there are three more to go. Three more to go before we finish this set of ten. Then we launch into the next description of what the Bodhisattva um, knows as he heads towards this fifth ground. If we understand that it's about meditation, we get a, a whole, we get a lot closer to it. These are perspectives that come from somebody who's been sitting still, calming the six senses. Okay. It's so interesting that when you study Buddhism, you have to come to terms with all these words that other religions use too, like Tao. There is an entire religion that uses the word Tao as its name. Are they talking about the same thing? Mm, good question. Um, Buddhism talks about the Tao all the time. And Master Hua would always say, Xiu Dao, the Ren. Cultivators of the Tao. You know, so it's a big word in Buddhism. Marga in Sanskrit, path, the way to go. So, um, I have, uh, I've been traveling and traveling and traveling this, this summer and autumn, summer, spring and summer, and haven't had time to share a lot of the experiences, such as the Swannanoa gathering in Asheville, North Carolina, and uh, this last trip to Toledo for my mother's 90th birthday. I'll give you, I'll let you see a picture or two. But um, I have been collecting stories and 
collecting songs too. Um, well, first, let's, let's transfer the merit first, then we'll tell you about that. So it's on the last page of your Singing the Dharma book. And please send out your merit using your concentrated, your equality, your impartial, res refined, essential mind to send it out. However you would like to make it a better world. Because our hearts are one, this world of pain turns into paradise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. Um, before we quit, we got another song to sing. How about turning to page 48? There's a bunch of songs from that first CD that we don't pay much attention to, and they're, it's good to keep them warmed up every now and then. Return, my dear brothers, return, turn again, won't you? Turn your hearts back before there's a who and a when. We all want peace, but peace is where it begins. I bid you turn, return, and turn again. Return, my dear sisters, return and turn again. Won't you turn your hearts back before there's a who and a when. We all want peace, but peace is where it begins. I bid you turn, return and turn again. Return, friends and neighbors, return and turn again. Won't you turn your hearts back before there's an us and a them? 
We all want peace, but peace is where you begin. I bid you turn, return, and turn again. Return, you world leaders, return, turn again. Won't you? Turn your politics to the welfare of women and men. We all want peace. Won't you lead us to where it begins? I bid you turn, return, and turn again. Return all you religions, return and turn again. Won't you turn your doctrines round away from fear and sin? You all preach peace, now show us how it begins. Let's pray to turn, return and turn again. Let's pray to Turn, turn, and turn again. Thanks to Ajahn Suchito for that song, which he had to whisper to me on the banks of Khao Yai River up in the Thai National Park, because monks don't. You know, Theravada monks do not. Okay, uh, we have had, uh, as I was going through the list of places that I've been, I certainly do not mean to forget City of 10,000 Buddhas, where I was for the ordination of 28 brand new monks and nuns, and then the transmission of the 42 hands and eyes, which was quite an experience. And by golly, what a... Uh, Blessing it is to have so many opportunities to be with people learning, studying, working, committing, vowing, changing. Very powerful. Inspiring. And it goes on to the point where, excuse me, Tuesday night here uh, at Tion's, here in Berkeley at Tion's Tea Shop on 4th Street, will be Tea and Dharma. Uh, we might make it again in September if all things go well, but certainly we'll do it this Tuesday night. 7.30, if you have a chance to come by, uh, we will be talking about... Oh, shoot, I just sent it out. Uh, the topic is... Oh, yes. People say, peaceful mind, peaceful world. Right? Like our ping dong qing jing xin, they say qing jing xin, qing jing shi. So is that true? That's what we're going to bring up. Is it the case that by making your mind peaceful, your family will be peaceful? Or your country will be peaceful? Yes or no? We'll be talking about it. So um, interesting, interesting topic, right? So that's going to be um, Tuesday night at Tion's Tea Shop. 4th Street in Berkeley, 7.30. Please do come. When does the Earth Store session begin? Okay, August 31st, next Saturday, right? Okay, so next weekend, the Earth Store Bodhisattva recitation session at City of 10,000 Buddhas begins. If you've never done one of those, do yourself a favor. Go check it out. Uh, you can do it for a day. You can do it for a week. Um, very powerful dharma. Um, Good stuff. Yes. That's is that the actual day? Right. Okay. So if you want to go up for one day, go up on Sunday, the first of September. There will be a big celebration, big banquet. So do check it out. Um, yes, I see. Saturday morning activity will not happen for the next two weeks. Is that the case? Mm -hmm. 
Ah, is that right? Okay. There's a large delegation of lay people going from Berkeley to Vancouver for the, um, the, the grand opening of the, the remodeling of Gold Buddha in Vancouver. Big group, which means Saturday morning Fa Hui, the Pumanpin and the, and the Dabe Chan, including the Buddha recitation at one o'clock, will be postponed until everyone's back. And people are, it's the end of the summer, a lot of people are taking a extended trip to Vancouver to uh, look around. So for the next two weeks, right? So this coming Saturday, week from today, and then the following Saturday, our Saturday morning, that Saturday morning will be postponed. Whether or not the monks here lead the rest of us in meditation, we'll see. They should. So there will be an event. That doesn't mean stay away. What that means is the regularly scheduled repentance and pumanpin will be different. Okay? But those of you who are not going to Vancouver, come around. You'll have something fresh and original, uh, led by our three bhikshus. At least two of them will be here. Okay? Got that? Yes, well, I see. Karen Wynn. Okay. Next Tuesday and Wednesday. This So, today being Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And how do people find out about that? This is Karen Wynn from Gold Mountain. Okay, Karen Wynn's mom apparently passed away. Father, father passed away. And she's been a Dharma friend for as long as I can remember. Um, so, t from 12.30 to 2, where? Okay, at the, the chapel at the end of Piedmont Avenue, there's a place to recite there. So people are invited if they would like to come recite uh, Buddha's name. And then Wednesday? Same? Okay, 3.30 to 6 for the Berkeley Monastery group, if you want to take part. Excellent. Okay, Jinwen. I'm here not sure if you can do it for the next two Saturdays, because we're going to go to Oakville or something like that. Okay. We might be here for the August 3rd and 3rd, but it's hard to be going to the East on next week. Okay, but you'll be back to lecture anyway. Um, or is it Marty? You can announce that. Okay. Yeah, that's too much, too, too confusing. So, there will be a, so next week will be Marty's lecture. Yeah. Marty Verhoeven will be lecturing next, next Saturday. Come and take part, and uh, you'll get, and then stand by for further instructions. So. Okay, September 1st is a Sunday that walking recitation will also be postponed. So, it's clear that there's a lot going on, and one of those things that's going on is Gold Buddha up in Vancouver is renovated and it's expanded a lot. So they're having an event. Uh, I'll be going up for that with our master Lai. And uh, then I come back on the second, quickly switch suitcases, Unpack, repack, and go to China for three weeks. So from the third on, Hung Lai, Fasher, and I will be going up with 12 people altogether to too many places in China. We have a huge pack schedule. Wow. You can all say, wow, Fasher, xin ku, wow. And I'll go, <laughs> xin ku. It's a lot. We're going uh, too many places and giving Dharma talks everywhere, which is... You know, it's nice work if you can get it, but I think she packed it too full this time, looking at the calendar. So. But I will be cl clicking my shutter, <coughs> taking pictures, ready to show everybody when we get back, and uh, be back on the 25th of September, so next time you'll see me. So, 
I think that's pretty much the news. Let's see. Yeah, you're on the 36. That's a new high, isn't it? Good. 36 folks online. Hello there, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the music. Oh, I have a good story. While I get, uh, oh, want to see my mother's picture? Yeah? Why not? Okay. Sure. So, um, tell you a story. Could somebody turn those lights off? Um, today, we had our uh, uh, reunion of Buddha Root Farm attendees. Had a big reunion today. It was really fun. And the, uh, among the attendees was Graciela's mom, uh, Madame Espinoza. And uh, she's great fun. Born in Texas, 76 years ago, has kids, has grandkids. And uh, her son was married here in the Buddha Hall. And she is Catholic, like Catholic, like Mexican, strong faith in Catholicism. And although she's grown grew up in Texas. And uh, so she told a wonderful story about um, what it was like to first start to know that her daughter, Chela, who we all know, uh, started coming around with Buddhists and like, oh boy, big trouble, nothing but trouble, you know. And uh, <laughs> bit by bit, Chela was really clever in bringing her mother around. And bit by bit, Chela's mom uh, started coming. And first thing I did was Chela brought her in the station, the family van to outside the monastery. And mom wouldn't look at me. She kept her face forward. And I came to the window, and she wouldn't roll the window down. <laughs> Chela's mom rolled the window down. And I, I was there, and I gave her a piece of candy. And she like, hmm, looked at me, you know. The next time she came, like three weeks later, Chela drove her up. She got out of the car, and we went back to the, 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 uh, the garden in, the, in the, the parking lot, and I gave her a plant. She was really happy to get a plant. She didn't expect that. She's a gardener, so I gave her the plant. So she's like one step further. The next time she came, we gave her a drink of water. She came in the back door, and I talked to her, and when she drove away, she said, you know, he's just like Father Rico, her Catholic priest. <laughs> so we're getting somewhere now. You know? And now she married her son here. Her son and her, her grandson is a vegetarian, you know. And so what did she say? She said, you know, that, uh, that CD that you recorded, you know, I play it all the time in my kitchen. I go around the house listening to that. And Chela's like the big smile, Cheshire grin on her face, and she says, Dharma Master, uh, that Buddhist music Dharma door, that's a big Dharma door. She says, a lot of people are going in through that door, she said. So I'm interested in recording more Buddhist music, I think. Okay, so just quickly, um, I want to show you these guys. These are the pictures. Um, had a big family reunion. Here it is, right there. Big family reunion. And uh, 18 people were there in Toledo, where I went. And my mom um, wants to thank everybody who were so kind to her in sending gifts, in sending her cards, and making her feel like she was really special, you know. It's... Uh, it really counts for a, uh, by the way, all of you Macintosh guys, look at this red line. Can you see that? That's funny. That's my, my display boo-boo. So um, here we go. Desktop, uh, mom's birthday edited. There we go. So she really was delighted to have all those greetings from everybody. It really matters to her. Um, 
that people here, you know, really care about her and her son. And I'm, of course, extremely grateful that um, all of you would, would do that for my mom. And it, she really, really likes it. So here we go. The party's here. And it makes, you know, it, it makes my being a Buddhist real for her that such kind people would care about her. Here's where the party was held. We'll go quickly through this. This is called the Sunset House. It's right across the street from where um, she lives. It says, here's a place. Debbie, that's my mother's name. Here's the new five-month-old infants born a day apart. This is my, it's funny, I, I won't bore you with it. These are relatives, okay? <laughs> that's it. Here's my stepbrother. Here I am singing, uh, how does it go? Um, uh, let's see. Um, it, kind of, it was called Wish to Repay. Thank you to the universe. Thank you to the earth and sky. Here's the group. Here's my mom. 18 people. There's more of those. So you'll see it. This is the orchids that you sent. Aren't they pretty? These came from Berkeley. She was thrilled. They don't have orchids like this in Toledo much. When they see them, they go, Oh, these came from California. <laughs> California. These are ducks. Walking across the street. Those are cherry tomatoes. Come on. Okay. These are flowers sent by my mother's older sister, Aunt Lucienne, who's 94. Here's Liz with two puppets. My sister Liz. Here's sister and brother. Eight years younger than me. Here's mom. We took pictures of every family group. There's mother and daughter. Cute little girl about to enter kindergarten. Another family shot. This baby, that baby. Various husbands and wives and kids. I won't bore you with it. Everybody know uh, Pamela, my cousin, Jin Hai, the Buddhist nun. This is her older brother, Leaves, and his new wife. Don't pick your feet at the breakfast at the dinner table. Father and daughter. Husband of stepsister, mom, mother and daughter, sister and new wife, stepsister-in-law and baby. <laughs> I'm sure in China there's a name for these relationships, right? Well, this is the brother, this is the husband of the daughter of the stepsister. In Chinese, it's probably gu gu ping ding, something like that. Didi gu gu jie jie mei mei, shu shu jiu jiu, ai. Okay. Ah, father and daughter, classic. Don't you wish you had one? No. I left home to avoid all that. No thanks. Let somebody else do that. The snacks, not entirely vegetarian, but pretty much. Nice picture. That's one of my better shots. Mother and grand daughter. My sister Liz gave a really good talk. Um, Stepbrother's son's wife and baby. This is Anne. She's 
originally from Korea. She and her twin sister were adopted at age three, grew up in Michigan her whole life, and uh, is an engineer in Michigan. Family. This kid's a Taekwondo black belt, believe it or not. The only monk at the party. <laughs> Stepbrother and wife. His son and grandson and new wife. This kid would not sit still. My camera couldn't catch him. See, blurred in every single shot. <laughs> Can't catch that kid. There we go. Lots of pictures. This is another cute picture. I'm proud of this one. I like that. Good lighting. Okay, pretty much that's it. That's the mom. Party's there. All right. Um, we had a wonderful... Ordination, wow, E. The ordination was fabulous. Uh, 28 new monks and nuns. And let me show you just a little bit of this one. Let's see, it's here. Uh, Stan Shoptaw is a marvelous photographer and book designer. And these are his pictures of what he saw at the ordination. At this point, they're getting tired of waiting for the monks to show up. Three masters and seven certifiers were all talking together, getting ready. And the, the ordinees, preceptees, had to wait and wait. And wait. Oh, I think they're coming. I think they're coming. Nope, false alarm. <laughs> wait a little longer. Uh oh. Could this be them? The cameras are going. Must be. Oh, I think they're coming. Oh, they must be coming. Not yet. Oh, there's a bus. 
Oh, red robes. Somebody's coming. They are. Here they come. This same process has happened since 2,500 years ago, still going on. In probably 96% of it is just the way it was done when the Buddha was in the world. What you're seeing is just the morning portion. There was another afternoon portion, then another day entirely for the threefold for mandalas, the threefold platforms of precepts. There they go. What a great shot. Here's the photographer and Fulin, Stan Shapta. There we go. So that's historic to have um, Mahayana and Theravada together uh, do the ordination. And that's the way Shurfu set it up. And uh, we're continuing with that process, which I think is just wonderful. All right. We'll, uh, you'll next hear from me uh, via reports, which we'll email back from China. And I'll charge Jin Chuan and Jin He Shi to read you my minutes, my notes from China. All right. Should we bow to the Buddhas?
bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Namo Dafang Wang Fu Hai 